In this video, we're going to look at edges and how they help painters tell their visual stories. Edges are areas of transition, and understanding how to use edges is vital to being a good painter. In this tutorial, I'm going to answer three questions. What are edges? Why are they important? And how do artists use edges to tell their story? Painters are visual storytellers, and edges are what artists use to direct the narrative, telling the viewer to look here, or just glance here and then move on. When used effectively, they edit the story, telling us what is important and what is supportive. Let's take a closer look at what edges are. Edges are areas of transition and are described as hard or soft. The transition occurs when there's a difference in value, color, or application, or all three. And it's the degree of the difference that defines the quality of the edge. Hard edges have abrupt transitions. They make us look and they hold our attention. In this painting of my daughter, there's a big difference in value from the light side of her face to the darkness of her hair. This is a hard edge, and it's the first thing we see when we look at this portrait. Hard edges created by extreme differences in value are a powerful tool an artist can use to draw attention to an area. To see how important value differences are, try this. Close your eyes and now open them. Looking at this page of squares, which one did you look at first? Big differences in value always demand our attention, even when color is involved. Soft edges have subtle transitions. We notice them, but we don't stay there. Soft edges knit the painting together with nuance. Notice the edge of her upper lip is defined by a slight change in color and value, and her hairband disappears into her hair using similar dark values that are different colors. These soft edges support the narrative without overwhelming it. The hardness and softness of edges are relative to each other. This still life feels quiet because it lacks the extreme hard edge of this watercolor portrait. Choosing how hard and how soft your edges are is important in setting the stage for your narrative. Let's look at how different edges are used to tell the story of my painting titled Frissen. There isn't a wide value range, so I'm relying on a lot of color changes to tell the story. The protagonist in this painting is the boy, and the word frissen means a feeling of excitement and fear. I used hard edges along his silhouette to make him the main subject. The swell of the waves has softer edges that rely on subtle color and value changes. At the crest of the wave, there's an application change, where light yellow is thickly applied in tiny specks to create the feeling of foam. All these edges work together to create a narrative. The anxious dread and excitement as the waves rush towards him. Let's look at why edges are important. Edges are for editing. Let's try an experiment. Stretch your hand out in front of you and spread your fingers wide. While you're in this position, stare at your thumb. While you stare at your thumb, what happens to your little finger? Now switch your gaze to your little finger and what happened to your thumb? We naturally have a very small field of focus with most of our sight in the softer peripheral vision. Our paintings will look more realistic if we mimic what we see naturally, using softer edges to support one main area for focus. You can see how important edges are for editing when you compare these two paintings of the same scene. Here, the edges are carefully placed to tell the story of summer sunlight falling on a farmhouse. 
The other is full of hard edges that define each object, making everything important. There's no story here, just a lot of information. So, how do artists choose what's important and paint their story? Well, first, you have to decide what's important to you. It's your story, so you decide. In my painting titled, It's All About the Vase, it's all about the vase. I began the painting by working where I wanted you to look first, the highlight on the colorful glazed blue pot. Once I had that in, the rest of the painting became about painting supportive relationships using hard and soft edges that would guide your eye around the painting and back to the pot. How do you actually create those edges? I rely on the palette to compare what I want my edge to be. To simplify the process, I think of my palette choices as visual walks or jumps. If you see someone walking on the street, you notice them, but don't really pay attention. But if you see someone jumping, you take notice, and that jump is a big difference and catches our attention. I rely on the palette by comparing pigments to see if they are a jump or walk. This row of pastel shows a value walk, but when I turn the video back to color, you can see the color jump of the red among the greens. In oil, I can scoop up paint on my palette knife and compare it to the other mixtures. Here, the yellow is a color and value walk. Against the blue, it's a color and value jump. In watercolor, we can still mix pigments the same way we do in oil. We just use water to change the values, but edges in watercolor are much more reliant on the wetness of the paper and the brush. Well, that was a quick overview of edges and how painters use them to tell their visual stories. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you would like to learn more, please join me at my Patreon site, The Painter's Classroom, where for $5 a month, you get lessons in the form of videos, handouts, and blogs. Plus, you get your art questions answered. The link is below. See you there!